Well, good morning to everyone. I appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to share this wonderful moment with you in your life. The uh, beginning of a, a wonderful journey that you're going to undertake in the service to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I congratulate you on your graduation and wish you all the best in the world. And I challenge you, I challenge you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to fulfill the Great Commission, to work in the vineyard, to cultivate, to plant, to water, to win souls for our Lord and Savior. Paul challenged Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16. He says, Take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. That is your job. Just as it was Timothy's, so is it yours. Pay attention. Be observant. Look at yourself every day. Make certain that you're in the truth, that you are in the faith. And then proceed to demonstrate that faith to the rest of the world. Help them to understand and to know what is a good and perfect will of Christ. This is what we're told to do in Peter. We are the priest. We are the servants of the Lord our God. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14 it says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. You know from whom you learned this gospel. It has been shared with you by your brothers in Christ. You have been taught the truth and you have examined and learned that truth yourself. You know it is the truth and you need to continue in that truth. Don't get to false doctrine. Don't yield to lies that are out of the world. But stand fast and defend the gospel. In Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 it says, But we will give ourselves continually in prayer and to the ministry of the word. That is our job. That is what we are to do. Pray for the lost. Pray for those that are over us. Pray for those that are around us, even for one another. And to minister the truth to the world. That's where we get our word preacher, this Caruso in the original Greek. It means the one who announces the will of the king. And that is exactly what you will be doing. In Titus chapter 1 and verse 9, it says, Holding fast to the faithful word, as he hath been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine and sound teaching both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. As we go about our daily lives, we're going to meet challenges. We're going to meet people that don't know the truth or that want us to believe and follow some other doctrine out in the world. And it's going to be our responsibility to correct them, to teach them, to guide them, to help them to know what the truth is. And to do that, we must study Study every day. Open the Bible. Be with the Lord in His Word and study it. Take it into your heart. Pray about it. Every day, every day is a new day that God has blessed you with to teach the lost, to praise Him, to glorify Him. You see, the reason this is so important is because we have in our heart the treasure that the world is seeking. The world is seeking the truth. The world is seeking God. It just doesn't know where to look for Him. It doesn't know how to find Him. It doesn't understand. And that is our job. We are a light into the world. God is the true light. He shines through us. That's why the Lord says to let your light so shine that other men can see. That is our job. That is what we do. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of God may be of God and not of us. We share the treasure. We teach the gospel. It's not our own. It's the Word of God. And we share this same treasure that the world, if it desires, may partake in the same blessings that we have learned of and are partaking of ourselves. You see, we were created for a purpose. 
that is to do good works. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That is what we can do. That is our life. That is an explanation of our purpose and our life. We are created by God in Christ Jesus to do good works. And what are those things? The things that God has told us to do. And the main thing that He desires for us to do is to labor in the vineyard. Because our labor in Christ will bring pleasure and glory to God. In Revelation chapter 4, and verse 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. That's talking about you. That's talking about me. It's telling you why you are here. You are here to bring pleasure to God. He created you for that purpose. And when we are teaching the truth, when we are going out in the world and helping people, and demonstrating that good and perfect will of God, we are bringing glory to Him. Just as Jesus said very clearly, all the things that He ever did, and all the presence of all those that were around Him, always did what? Always gave glory to God. Just as the time when He raised Lazarus from the dead, He told, He prayed and before them, and He said, Father, I know that Thou hast heard me, and has always heard me. But I speak unto thee now for those around me. What? To what? To know that God the Father, God the Father is the one who receives all glory. And that is our job. That is what we do when we teach the lost. That's how important it is that we go about doing God's will. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, this is exactly what your teachers did for you and it's exactly what you must do for those that you teach. It says, And the things that thou hast heard of me and many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. That is exactly what has happened in your life. As you have gone through school, you have learned the Word of God, you have learned the Gospel, you have learned how to teach it. It is now in your hands, in your responsibility to go and make disciples. Just as the Great Commission has been issued, it is for you to go and fulfill. Teach others that they in turn may teach others. That is how the Gospel has been intended to be shared from man to man, from heart to heart. From life to life. That is the way God has designed the gospel. And it is your responsibility. Your duty. Your joy. To serve God. And teach others. That they may partake. In eternal life. And enjoy. The same blessings that you. Are beginning to enjoy yourself. And how do we know this? Why? How do we know that this brings glory to God? Because in John chapter 15. In verse 8 clearly says, Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Not hard to understand that. God loves you. God has taught you the truth through the men who have shared you the gospel. Now He expects you in turn to share it with others. What a glorious opportunity and I challenge you every day in the soul for the Lord. Every day defend the gospel. Every day, every morning when you get up, thank God for that day and ask for an opportunity to glorify Him. Urge the hearts of the men around you. Teach them by love. That is how the gospel is shared in love. Teach the gospel in love. Be strong in the faith. Be sound in the faith. Defend the faith always. And demonstrate to the world the true gospel of Christ. I challenge you, and that is the same challenge I give myself every day. You do that, and your life will always, always be full of joy. 
because you will be able to reflect on the good that you've done and the hearts you have won for the Lord. And you will always be able to lay down at night and lay your head on your pillow and smile and say, Today, I've taught a lost soul. Today, I've glorified my Father. Thank you for letting me talk to you. And I give you God's blessing. And I hope that you will fulfill the Great Commission and serve our Lord and Master well, as I'm sure that you would. You have a wonderful day, and congratulations on your graduation. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the wonderful preaching, and also um, within a sharp message. But you have given so many scriptures, and also you have given very good explanation. I request you, my beloved brother, uh, sir, uh, you are one of the very good professor and preacher. We know you have been preaching the Word of God since years. I would like to invite you. I request you, please, uh, could you pray for all, for all of our students? I would like to invite you to pray for our students. Are we hearing? I would love. Yeah. Yes, sir. I would. I would love to say a prayer for them. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now can you pray? You want to bow with me in this? Yes. So I will. Yeah. If you would bow with me, let's have a word. Honey God of heaven, as we bow humbly in your presence at this time, thank you so much for this day and what it means to us as children of God that we are able to help these young men to graduate and to step out into the world and to defend the gospel, to plant the seed of your word in the hearts of men and bring forth fruit for you. We pray, Father, Heavenly Father, that you will be with each and every one of them as they go about their daily lives. Help them in their circle of influence to see the needs in the hearts of the men around them. Help them to have courage and strength to stand fast for the gospel. Help them to bear fruit for you, Father, and be with them always. And give them courage and strength. Help them when the going seems hard and tough, when the challenges become real and they face them on a daily basis. Be that strength that they need. Lift them up on eagles' wings and carry them when they seem to and feel as though they cannot stand on their own. For Father, we know that you are with us always. You have never left us, nor will you leave us. But you are our strength, our rock, the horn of our salvation. You are our shelter, our high tower. You are all the things that you've told us you are. Yeah in your word, and we believe that, and we thank you for loving us so much, and being there for us and helping us. Thank you for your word that guides us and teaches us. Help us and give us wisdom and knowledge to be able to share it with those that are around us, that we might help them too, to understand your love for them, and that they might turn from the, from the world and come unto you and find that salvation that you are so freely offered. Thank you so much, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.